record here. There we go. All right, so brilliant. Listen, welcome along. I'm really glad to see you. There'll be uh, other people coming in in just a second, I'm, uh, I, I'm sure. So we're going to talk about um, objections uh, today, objections in sales. And when I first started talking about uh, objections, I knew what I meant, but um, uh, it's interesting when you try and give out a, a particular message, particularly when we've got multiple different uh, cultures and ethnicities and languages, uh, and, and English is supposed to be my my major language. So um, I, when I originally talked about objections, I thought um, I was going to be talking about in the closing process, and your typical objection would be the price, et cetera, et cetera. But it's really interesting, and I'm so glad I asked the question in the way that I did, because some of the feedback that I got was from much earlier in the journey. And that may be, and that, oh, Sveta, hi, uh, welcome, uh, well, welcome to the, uh, w welcome to the call. So, um, in fact, very timely, uh, Sveta. So I was just, uh, first of all, we're, we're uh, recording this, I hope that's okay with you. Um, and uh, the objections um, are often coming earlier in the same sales process. So I was just saying to uh, the rest of the uh, cohort, uh, Sveta, that um, I was expecting price to be uh, an issue, an objection, if you like. But some of the ob objections that came out when I did the poll are from other parts of the process. So what we're going to do is, as usual, and we won't be able to get to absolutely everything today. It's a really, really big subject. I am just going to take one or two um, sort of issues that I had fed back, and I hope that it will give us sufficient um, insight to handle objections and please do feel free I, I don't particularly want this to be a lecture um it's great to get some feedback if there's anything that you'd like to say challenge me on because i uh, i do not have the monopoly on uh, wisdom um but i do have a lot of experience i'd like to bring to the table um and i i, I would real well uh okay jeff yes i understand thank you for that um but i would welcome and uh and as jeff is doing put it in the chat box um and i will uh i will get to it i'm running off a full complement of screens today so i should be able to get around uh everyone and everything okay <clears throat> excuse me i'm welcome along if you just joined the call i'm going to go on to share screen just now and um so you should now see you should now see on your screen an image of one of our favourite uh, actors here in the United Kingdom, a guy called David Walliams. Uh, a guy called David Walliams. And uh, he's very famous in a particular television programme for Computer Says No. Uh, now, I don't know if you've ever come across uh, anyone um, uh, that, that's kind of, kind of done that to you. You ask him a question, they put it in the computer, computer says no and it can be a very robotic very frustrating um issue to uh, uh to be confronted with but there we are we are professional sales people we're professional business people we, we can't afford to just walk away we've got to try and work with it welcome to the call natalia great to uh great to see you okay so here we go then so brilliant in the uh chat box it would be fantastic if you could just dump in or type in even not dump in your um, geographic location that'd be helpful if you want to put in your linkedin url that would be uh, very welcome as well there lots of, this is networking of a different kind so you're very welcome to connect with others um it would be helpful to know where you're currently scoring on uh, sales objections um how confident are you how competent do you feel at sales objections and, and my objective will to be to get you just in these 45 minutes or so 38 left um that i will try and move the dial just a little bit for you okay right okay so uh sales trainer you already know that by now i would be really interested and we'll come to this uh in in a little bit on what future sales subjects you would like to know about as well so this came out of um, this subject objections came out of a uh, um, an event that we did three four weeks ago and i'm really keen to um to get to, to deliver this 
But if there's more that you want to know about, welcome, uh, Thurman. Um, if there's more that you want to know about, please let me know and I'll, uh, I'll create some content uh, around that. So, and let's, let's do some Q&A. Okay, so last week, a uh, number of you were on, some of you weren't. Um, we were talked about maximizing revenue um, income from your existing clients. I, I must make sure I don't confuse revenue uh, and income um, because we've got Natalia on, on the line who is a um, fantastic accountant based in the north of England. Um, so we want to be more. Fermin, welcome to the call. Um, we want to do um, more than just be a donor recipient relationship. It's the lowest common denominator, very commoditized. We want to be delivering much more value than that to make it worth investing in those uh, relationships to understand what your uh, your value proposition is to the customer and it may be not exactly what you think it is you might think you're going in with benefits a b and c but they don't see that they see a and b maybe but actually they see d as well something else entirely so that can be a very sobering conversation but also enlightening and it's really important to understand the value that they see in you so that you can keep pressing on that button keep delivering value um adjacency what else can you sell them so if you're uh, uh if you're an accountant let's say and you're just um submitting their end of year accounts maybe you can do cash flow forecasting maybe there are other um, uh, accounting subjects that you can also deliver for them as well. Um, so uh, if you're in the Microsoft business, maybe you're selling them ERP software. So you've got relationship there, you're famous for something, but maybe um, you can go to them with a Dynamics, with a CRM solution as well. Because once you've got something in there, and you've got a reputation, and let's assume that that reputation is good, it's positive, it makes it much easier to sell something else from a Microsoft stable um, or from whichever stable you're in particular from. Welcome along if you just joined the call. Um, and then strategic account plans. Now, Maya Culpa, um, I have just about finished the document. I've just about finished the document. So if anyone wants, uh, a copy of my template, the strategic account plan, put your name in the uh, chat box and I will send it out to you hand on heart latest this afternoon, which is uh, this afternoon uh, UK time. And then relationship development. Do you remember the exact opposite of number one? We want to be a trusted advisor. We want to be up there in the food chain, so to speak. And who are your sales champions? Who will sell your solutions for you as a customer, not as part of your sales team. So they're your unpaid, your silent sales teams. I call them champions on your behalf. Okay, right, I've already done that. Okay, so here's a few uh, 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 objections that came across. I did a straw poll, if you remember. Um, and here's some of the things that came back at me. Budget. Budget is always the top one. You're too expensive. I will deal with that um, in a uh, in a second. And I'll try and keep an eye on the uh, chat box here. Just keep me honest on that. Okay, Jeff, yes, absolutely. Uh, and Mickey, ejection handling, all good. Mickey, well done. Okay, brilliant. Um, okay, uh, we're happy. Now that's a really interesting one. And that's what led me to believe that actually we're, what we're talking whereas i thought we we're going to be much longer and uh, much further along in the sales process some of the feedback has come well actually we could do some help earlier in in the sales process so uh, that is fantastic feedback i'm really pleased to uh, to get that okay next so gatekeepers and um uh, in relation to gatekeepers um so that's the very beginning um, start of the uh, uh, sales process where we're not even uh, in front of or talking to a decision maker. We're trying to get past someone. That's a great tip. And also, um, what makes you different? What makes you different? Which suggests that we're at the beginning part of the sales process. And uh, there are, um, sorry to tell you, but there are a million or so accountants that are going to be on 
uh, LinkedIn, what's so good about you? Um, you're going to have to get to an answer to uh, to that question. Okay, brilliant. Now, some tips of things not to do um, is going to be uh, you mustn't ask or you have to be really careful when you're confronted with an objection about sounding like a whinging child. We've got to be grown-ups. And sorry to break it to you. So uh, try not to ask why in such a way. You can ask it in a different way. But when someone says you're too expensive, you just have to explore that. You've got to stay in the moment. It can feel a little uncomfortable sometimes. Or when you say we're too expensive, uh, uh, Mr. or Ms. Customer, what exactly does that mean? Does that mean we're just too much money or I'm not delivering enough value? You've got enough budget, but you don't see enough value. Um, we have to try and get closer together at that. The price that I need versus the price that you're willing to uh, pay. Or, because we're all over 18, we have to decide we're never going to get that and we're going to walk away. And it's much better to get a no earlier than a no later. It's much less expensive um, and it will save your, um, your mental health, frankly. Okay, right. So that's the budget thing. Um, I want to talk about uh, we're happy with our current supplier. Now, does anyone on the line, uh, and again, put it in the chat box if you prefer, does anyone come across that objection at all? We're happy with our current supplier. So if you're selling CRM systems, your erstwhile competition will be Salesforce. Probably very difficult to unseat um, Salesforce. It's a very sticky customer solution, as is Dynamics. So, um, but does anyone come across that? I'm just going to hang on a bit because that's quite a specific one. I know at least one person has talked about uh, gatekeepers. Now, um, it's a bit like... Uh, it's a bit like when you jump in the ocean, uh, and I, I see this a lot when I go through my Facebook feed or uh, even on LinkedIn, which seems to have bled over. Um, you know, someone will, uh, someone will uh, sort of uh, complain that they've been in the, uh, uh, they've been in the ocean off South Africa, and uh, they're gonna, um, you know, they're surprised when they get bitten by a shark. Now, no one's gonna bite you. Um, if you if if you phone someone up and um, and want to get through to a decision maker, but sharks are doing what they do. They they feed, uh, or in fact they they're curious. And but you might feel that as they take a bite out of your leg or whatever. A gatekeeper is doing what a gatekeeper does. Their job is to protect their boss's time. And so there are a number of uh, mindset things. Uh, that, that you have to consider when you are phoning up uh, a gatekeeper. Now, what you must not do is attempt to bulldoze your way through, because that will almost always end in um, uh, frustration on your part and may even uh, end up in a letter being received by your boss or your company somewhere complaining about your behavior you've got to try and this is why sometimes we get paid you know decent sums of money is because we have to try and figure away figure out a way to work with the gatekeeper or work around the gatekeeper so the gatekeeper is just doing their job and any amount of shouting isn't going to win them over so we can try and be their friend we can uh, develop a rapport with them we can um, when you try and get around the gatekeeper, I am a uh, gatekeeper, I beg your pardon, I'm guessing that um, you could receive a number of objections. They could be, uh, they're far too busy. It could be, can you send an email? Um, okay, we're not going to do the hands up thing. Put in there either a Y or an N. Do you ever send an email when you are asked to? by the gatekeeper. Do you ever do that? I'm really interested to know whether you do, whether you don't say Y for yes, N for no. Okay, right, okay, right. Yep. And Jeff, thank you for that. Yes, okay, right now. Now, Jeff, in terms of percentage, 
100 is all the time, zero, no other time. In terms of percentage, how successful are what we going? How successful are you, if you don't mind me asking, at when you follow up, if you follow up, uh, at getting through the next time? Um, just gonna wait a few seconds and grab uh, a drink because I'm interested. Thank you, right. And, and I really appreciate your candor, um, Jeff. And I've got to tell you, I doubt anyone else is any different, by the way. Uh, you, you, you send an email if it's worth to. Yeah, so Natalia, how do you decide whether it's worth sending? I'm inclined to go with Jeff. 10% uh, of the time. Wow, Jenny White, welcome to the call. So we're talking about objections. We're into uh, gatekeepers, if you come across those. And... Um, uh, uh, Jenny, good to see you on camera. Thank you. Um, so we're talking about objections <clears throat> and we're talking about getting through gate gatekeepers. Uh, and I just asked the question about how many people actually send an email when the gatekeeper says, can you send an email? And um, uh, Jeff was kind enough to say yes. And only about 10% of the times am I successful when I follow up the next time. And I got to tell you, uh, Almost everyone is in the same boat as you. Welcome, Tristan. Um, almost everyone's in the same boat. They'll they'll send an email in the hope, and hope is not a strategy in itself, in the hope that they'll get through. 90% of the time, you won't get through because their job, the gatekeeper's job, is to protect their boss's time. And if they put salespeople through, they'll hear about it in the end of the day. So we have two options, really. Work around that gatekeeper or persuade the gatekeeper, because if we get the gatekeeper on the side, on our side, that can be incredibly powerful. Then you have to, you'll have to judge whether the person that you're talking to is at all interested in forming a relationship with you. So if you're phoning up and you're very proud of what you do and you deliver real benefits and you've researched that prospect it's not just a cold call you've got reason to believe they could be guilty of wanting your product or being in need of your product or service then it's i believe it's worthwhile taking the effort to form a relationship prove your credibility um follow up when you say you're going to follow up um and uh, and persuade. I do believe that in a small percentage, somewhere between 10 and 25%, you can get that person's assistance that will say, uh, the gatekeeper might speak to their boss, they might say, Jenny, actually, I speak to salespeople all day, this person just might be worth talking to, they've researched the company, they've done that. So you turn that person in from a blocker into uh, uh, an ally. I'm not going to say they're a champion yet. We talked about champions earlier, but you can turn them from a blocker where they're blocking everyone else into an ally and they are going to help you. Now, it may well be also that the gatekeeper, and I'm going to major on gatekeepers here for an obvious reason because it's a, a commonly felt uh, frustration in a salesperson. It may well be that it's not the CFO, the chief financial officer you need to speak to. It is someone several layers down in finance. Now, what do you do when you get that? What makes you different? Your knowledge and your approach. Absolutely, uh, Natalia. And I am guessing, so that's only relevant and it's only credible if that customer is going to agree with you. So you're going to have to have done your research to know that that customer is interested or would be interested in your particular expertise in accounting, especially if they've got an office in Bucharest, maybe, um, where your sort of dual, um, your ability to talk across uh, tax jurisdictions, that's a phrase I didn't expect to say today, your ability to talk about uh, across tax jurisdictions um, in the UK and Romania, uh, would be helpful and beneficial to that particular customer. So that's also a function of knowing your value, knowing your difference in the context of that customer. Okay, right. Um, Suad, welcome to uh, welcome to the call. So 
the gatekeeper will try and fend you off with uh, other people instead. Again, protecting their time, but still giving you some access to the account. If it's a very big customer where they could potentially have thousands of people in, they're going to be hundreds in finance and you may get bounced uh, down or across to someone else in finance, let's just say. I think that's worth pursuing. But when you're on the phones of the gatekeeper, you what I tend to do is I would say to uh, I would say to them, Mister or Ms or whoever it is, um, okay, I will go and talk to them. But can I come back and meet with whomever the chief financial officer is at some stage when I've done more? Would that be okay if I called up? So you set the expectation. You're not going to be. It's not going to be a cold call next time. It's going to be a warm call, and you're delivering on your obligations to say, and you're going to do what you said you were going to do. That's really important. That's important in terms of building trust. They're only going to deal with people that they trust. And part of building trust is to do what you say you're going to do when you say you're going to do it. That's really, really important. So gatekeepers, um, uh, very early on, generally in the sales process, if you're in a really big sales pursuit, you can have multiple different gatekeepers along all lines of the journey that's a slightly different more complex conversation probably not for this call but if anyone's got any uh, interest in that particular area and exploring that area then i'll be happy to uh, to uh, get involved okay so gatekeepers so um is there any anything else in relation to gatekeepers that somebody wants to ask bump it in the uh, chat pod or drop me a line that keeps saying dump. I must say, I must stop saying that. But anyway, if you've got anything in, in terms of gatekeepers that you want to uh, deal with that I haven't covered so far, 90% um, of the time, sending an email as a follow up um, will will fail. The reason it will fail, probably two reasons. Number one, it wasn't really required. They were trying to get you off the phone. That's their job. Uh, and the second reason is you've written a crappy email uh, because I've read some of the stuff, uh, not from you, I'm sure you're all brilliant, but, but some, some of the stuff that comes to my inbox um, is written poorly. Uh, you know, I'd have to look really hard at the email and, and the call to action or the reason for, for reading it is two thirds of the way down. Um, you know, they're really poorly written. So you need to be able to write good email, uh, good emails. There are some, there's some stuff on my website where I can point you towards where that will show you how to structure um, a, a sort of cold email, if you like. So you're very welcome to subscribe. Most of you subscribe already, but you're very welcome to go to that. Um, that would be good. The other thing about objections is, is um, and you can see on your screen here, um, someone also mentioned we're happy with our current supplier. Now, uh, the worst thing you can do when someone's got a, a current supplier is to to attempt to rubbish them, to undermine them uh, in some way. That is the worst thing you can do. It's the easiest way to alienate yourself between yourself and the um, uh, the person that you're talking to. They've made a decision to invest in that supplier, rightly or wrongly, doesn't really matter. Uh, the last thing you want to do is undermine Welcome to the call if you've just uh, just got access. Um, the worst thing you can do is undermine uh, that relationship. So here's, here's what I do. And uh, yeah, Natalia, yeah, that's right. Um, emails can look like spams. Um, we all recognize those these days. So what do I do when I'm told we've got a current supplier? Because let's face it, unless you have something that's really unique, the people that you're phoning up have probably already got something similar to what you're supplying, or they've got something identical to what you're supplying. There's very little um, sort of newness. So if you're an accountant, they've probably already got an accountant. If you're into web copy, um, they've probably already got someone that they're dealing with in that relationship. So if what they say, we're already happy with our current supplier, here's what I say. I say something like, Fantastic. What is it that you really like about their service? 
what is it that you really like about that service? And that does a couple of things. That, first of all, is a very friendly approach. If they're being um, kind enough to be open with you, they're having a conversation, even though it's a tense conversation because you're, you're making a cold call and not everyone's comfortable with that. At least they're engaging, they're communicating with you. So make a friend of them, make it build that rapport, get them to be telling more to you than they will from the next cold caller that, that phones them up. So, so excellent. What is it you really love about what they do? And then, you know, first of all, one of the things that they really value, whatever it might be, um, is that they have a very flexible approach. Let's say, um, you know, it's not a cookie cutter approach that they take with their accounts. I'm picking on accountants here, but it could be whatever you do. Um, they're very flexible. They do things the way we want them to do. So we like things done in a particular way. You can make a note of that. You can use that in terms of your intelligence um, uh, that you're getting from the account. Uh, uh, I hope that translates. So make a friend of them, be positive, be upbeat, um, engage with them. And then if they've told you one thing that they really like, just say, uh, okay, is there anything else that you really like? And they will keep telling you stuff. If you've made a friend, if you've built that rapport, they will keep telling you stuff. This is all valuable intelligence for you. If uh, it gets to the point where you feel the conversation is uh, running out, you could then end the call with um, something like, hey, Jenny, I'm picking on you now, Jenny. Hey, Jenny. Um, everything sounds 100% perfect. That sounds absolutely brilliant. Uh, sounds 100% perfect. Is that that right? And then, you know, Jenny will say one of uh, several things. It could be, you know what, Keith, sorry that you're, uh, you know, I've really enjoyed the call, but there's really nothing here for you. In which case you can't really do anything more with that, but you have gained some valuable intelligence. You've made an impression, hopefully a good one with Jenny, and the, uh, the 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 there's an open line of communication should should the facts change their supplier messes up or all of a sudden we've got something else we want to talk to Jenny about that could be one way that Jenny responds the other way could be well do you know what nothing's 100 percent Keith um I really wish they'd do fill in the rest of the sentence yourself I really had this wish they had this service they don't and therefore we have some people that look after that in a different company well then you've got something to talk about which is well okay uh, uh, how's that working um is that working well why do you need that kind of service all kinds of things welcome to the call if you've uh, if you've just got in um and and but we're talking now we've got much more intelligence they're dealing with multiple providers for one single service that must be a headache it's administrative overhead can you present a more elegant uh, solution for that company um, can you do deliver more value by being a single point of contact by being a single company that delivers all of that um, a number of telecoms deals are done um, on the basis that um, instead of having a thousand, and I mean literally a thousand different suppliers for software, for services, for telecoms consulting, um, it was just, it came down to two companies, my own company, Hewlett Packard, and, uh, and IBM on that occasion. Um, so the value proposition was saving them money, but also saving them all that heartache and heartburn of dealing with multiple different uh, providers. If you're working with not even massive companies, but if anyone over 100 employees where they've got multiple suppliers, um, if you come to them armed with a, uh, a service that it, uh, takes them from 10 suppliers down to one supplier, uh, and you're very credible, that can be a really powerful argument. So don't, don't, don't lose sight of that. Okay, so that was uh, gatekeepers. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna go on to the next one because um, that's uh, more complicated. But if anyone's got any other questions about gatekeepers, uh, put it in the chat, or if there's something else you want to talk about while you're on this call, which is being recorded, by the way, um, then let me know also. 
Okay, coming into the last um, 12 minutes or, or, or so, I want to talk about uh, another uh, objection that was cited when I put out a call, Jimmy, uh, last week for what objections are people coming into? They've come to me with half a dozen different things. So what makes you different? And my goodness me, this is a really, really big one because, um, you know, there are, if you're a business coach, especially, and we've got at least one on the, one on the line, if you're a business coach, there are 760 million people on LinkedIn. I guarantee you at least 1 million of those will be business coaches um, because you know, there are only so many professions in the world um, and there are a uh, you know, large number of people um, and there will be too much supply for the amount of demand. That's just the nature of, uh, of things. So if you're a business coach, it's too general you'll need to be more specific than that and, and in my own business i only coach on sales there are much better business generalists out there i'm focused on sales so what makes you different and you're going to have to think about that you are you, you're going to have to be prepared for that question um, up front it won't surprise you to know that i've got a training course that's on that um, but you are going to have to think about what makes you different. What's so good about you? Now, that how you answer that will depend upon how confident you are and your self-esteem at the particular moment that you're either writing it all down to say, I'm different, I'm good because, and then fill in, you'll need at least three reasons. Um, you will need to get to the heart, the very essence of why you're different. Now, what I can only speak about my world here um, with, any, with any degree of authority. The reason I'm different, I believe, is that I've closed deals of $45 a month for, for broadband up to um, over a billion dollars for a software outsourcing uh, contract and pretty much everything in between. It's quite rare you would come across someone with that kind of current experience. And I've worked with big corporates and small smaller micro businesses, i.e. less than nine, nine employees or less. Um, so that's quite a rare sort of beast. Uh, the beast is probably the right word. Um, a rare beast that that comes in. So I'm going to ask you, Fermin, Jenny, Jeff, everyone else, what's di so different about you? Now, sometimes that's easy to articulate. Well, we're Microsoft. We've got at least one of the their account execs on, on, on the line here. We're Microsoft, uh, but you have to be really careful you don't come across as arrogant. Um, and, uh, and unfortunately that's the, uh, the nature of the world that we're inhabiting in. So um, also, I, I, I wanna give you, actually I'll, I'll go back to these slides because we're on sh shared. So uh, we're past this now, the point of objective thing, can you leave me? One of the, let me come off there. One of the case studies that I uh, worked on, that's better. Uh, one of the case studies that I worked on was when I did a turnaround for uh, a university uh, management school. Now, I've never even been to university, so uh, I honestly felt like a duck out of water. But I've got to believe if you have a single goal and enough clever people around the table that you're working with, you should be able to figure it out. So when I when I spoke to this management school and said, what's so different about you? Unsurprisingly, they, they found it difficult to answer that question. Sometimes you just cannot see the wood for the trees. I hope that expression um, translates. Sometimes you're just too close to something, you can't actually recognize what it is. And so someone like me will come in and be able to ask the right kind of questions, get the right kind of information, uh, and, and make uh, 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 a diagnosis, if you like, from that. Now, on this uh, master's program that we were talking about, um, that they were having difficulty recruiting to it. That was their pain. Remember, it's our responsibility to identify pain. They were unable to um, uh, recruit enough people in time for the new academic year. That was their pain problem. So I helped them through that. Uh, and we got 23, we were only after 20, but we got 23 in seven weeks. 
and they were hugely um, positive and excited about that. Now, only in the wrap up, when I was around the table with a, a conference uh, table with half a dozen other people, including some academics that taught on that course, some lecturers, some uh, administrators, I heard a sidebar conversation with one of the academics saying, by the way, Martin, and that was his name, we're number one again for corporate strategy. Now, um, now I overheard that conversation and I stopped that um, that meeting. I said, sorry, I couldn't help but overhear what you were talking about. Number one for corporate strategy. What does that mean? Now, we were in the northwest of England um, at the time. Uh, does that mean we're number one in the northwest? Or, and they said, oh, no, we're number one in the world. Typical British understatement, um, because that's what we're really good at, at being understatement, understated. And I said, what, number one in the world? You mean better than Harvard? Oh, yes, we're uh, we're better than Harvard. Better than Wharton? Yes, we're, yeah, thanks, Mickey. Um, Yes, we're better than Wharton. And I said, do you know what? To know, seven weeks ago, when we started out this, this uh, program of sales turnaround, and that's where the penny dropped for them, that was one of their uniques. Uh, but they hadn't even thought about it. They've not thought about it um, because you know most people don't like the word sales, uh, but, and that's something we've all got to work on. So my question to you, which you may not be able to answer in the next five minutes, is what is it that you've done? And if you dig deep enough, you will you will uncover something, um, and that depends on your level of confidence that you're feeling in the moment. You will have done something astounding. I promise you, if you've been in the workplace more than five years, you will have done something astounding that you're that you're not showing off about. You're not showing off about because I tell you now, something in your childhood told you don't show off. Um, I, because you know, we are no different. You're no, not that much different to me. We might be in different places around the world, but uh, what, you know, we're not that different. Um, so you'll have been told off by some grown-up that was big in your life. Don't show off. Don't do this. Don't do that. We're full of don'ts. It's human nature. It can't be helped. Um, so dig deep. Work out what was it when you really pulled a rabbit out of the hat. Now that is unique. It was about your operating environment at the time. It was about you and the uh, the behaviour that you exhibited in the company at that time. All of those things added together to the benefit of the client or the program that you were working on, that is the unique. It's almost like a, a multiple Venn diagram that's all coming together, all knitted together. That is the unique. And that's what you need to try and replicate in a reasonable time frame, maybe 20 or 30 seconds. Yes, multiple rabbits out of the house. If you're a mother, you'll have done this on many, many occasions. It may not be in a business context, but actually the, the thought process, the behaviours, the attitude can be applied to whatever. And I've got this. But um, that. Uh, so if you've had to uh, juggle that many balls, if you've had to, uh, you know, a multitask like that, you will have lots of rabbits that you've pulled out of the hat for your customers um, in the past. You just have to think about it and it is worth taking uh, anywhere between 10 minutes and an hour to get yourself in the zone so that when you are asked the question, what's different about you, you can recall a story like I recalled about the management school just now uh, and turning that story around. I told you about the parties that were involved in that conversation so you can relate to it. I told you what the outcome was. We discovered we're number one in the world. And just to see that through, by the way, they have doubled the uh, site, the so what, which I keep talking about. The so what to that is num number one, they've increased their fees because supply and demand, demand has gone up for their program. Um, and number two is they've actually got a waiting list for people. They've got, um, they can only accommodate 40 people on, on their uh, program. So um, they've got a waiting list now for people that are waiting 
to get on their on their uh, MBA program. But that that's not to say I'm so good, although I'm not bad. The point is, what's your so what? Where you've made a difference? What's the so what? How has that benefited your customer? Have you helped them raise their prices because they're you, you've uh, represented to the marketplace how good they are relative to the competition enabled enabled them to put up their prices if you've that is gold dust if you've if you've done that if you're supplying services and you, do you remember there are only two benefits you can ever deliver ever no matter what you do sell more stuff reduce costs if there are only those two things so what do you do to help them sell more stuff or reduce their costs or if you're really really good you should be able to link them both so i i helped them re, uh, increase sell more stuff that was the university reduce their costs in terms of the cost to acquire new business went down because more people were searching for them so i helped them do both if you think hard enough about your case studies and I'm into, I've been talking far too much, but uh, I'm into the uh, increased customer satisfaction. Good one, Fermin. Increased customer satisfaction. I believe, I believe that will, at the very minimum, help them sell more stuff. So the last um, uh, client, that I, uh, corporate client I worked with, um, BT, that I came out of a couple of months ago, we, are you familiar with something called net promoter scores? Have you heard of that before? Net Promoter, NPS, sometimes it's called. It's a way of measuring, will your customers recommend you? So Mekdi, yes, absolutely, Microsoft could be into this. Um, it's a way of representing uh, uh, a, a number that says, will your customers recommend you to other customers? Would they recommend you? Uh, and it goes from minus 100 to plus 100, and anything that's got a plus number is they would recommend you. Uh, and when I got to, uh, it wasn't just about me, but when I got to them, uh, they were at minus two, which is not a great place to be. And when I left, they're at plus 10. So still a way to go, but they've moved, they've moved the dial. That's net promoters, net promoter score. So I lost myself then. Uh, that was about yes so in other words Fermin thank you we get there so if you improve their customer satisfaction you're going to help them sell more stuff and they will keep more of their customers because they'll be delighted by the service and that will yep Jeff okay thank you for that you'll get a recording of this afterwards thing uh, and that will help them uh, retain their customers which will in turn in, in time reduce their costs so that is worth pursuing and getting the story right just then, um, just then firming and for anyone else that's uh, in, in, involved in that. Right, now a couple, I'm, I'm gonna come to the, uh, I'm gonna come to uh, pretty much the end now and I hope you all forgive me uh, just one slide to finish off before we go to next week. Uh, and that's gonna be, uh, that's gonna be um, this, which is, uh, Starting 20th of September, I'm going to continue to do these every Tuesday because I'm, I'm enjoying it. I kind of feel like there's some value uh, and I'm growing my network and it's a good thing to do. But we are only scratching the scratch here of some of the issues that we talk about. My sales masterclass series, which I've already got two spaces um, um, sold on, starts on the 20th of uh, September. Um, the ideal thing to do, if you're interested in this, is to come along with uh, uh, a big, what would represent a big win for you? Is it a new client that you wanna take through this journey? It's seven modules in seven weeks, so it's one afternoon a week, and there's a bit of homework as well. Um, if, you want, if there's a new client that you wanna approach, that you want to win, that you want to land, and you, you come in, I will give you a strategy after we come out uh, of the seven modules. You'll have a strategy. You'll know what your message needs to be, who you need to talk to, what the message should be for each individual, um, and, uh, uh, and lots, lots more uh, besides that. And you'll know how to go about that. So it doesn't even matter if you've 
you want to do a big deal and you've never done one before, I can show you how to do that. Um, the last purchase order, by the way, I got, um, it was 250 pounds. Um, so that it's not all about big deals. It's about just where your business is at and what you do for a living. But that's what I'm, I'm seeking to do. So um, the, uh, if you've got any questions on that, by all means, DM me. Um, I hope you can see from the cohorts that we've had before, there are people from all walks of life uh, and from all cultures and ethnicities. And I'm doing it all online now, hence top left is all online um, because it just makes it easier. It cuts my costs down as well. So anyway, listen, I'll um, I'll leave you to that. I'll follow up with uh, recording to this, this video, <clears throat> excuse me, and um, and I'll include and explain the video for the um, for the masterclass as well. Are there any last minute questions that anyone wants to ask? If not, we'll, uh, we'll uh, end up. Tristan, is that you live? Welcome, couldn't quite hear you yet. Yeah, okay, good. Um, so listen, I'm gonna leave that with you. If there are any other questions, if you wish you'd asked any question, but somehow just, just were uncomfortable in asking, drop me a DM if we're connected on LinkedIn. Um, and we'll we'll take it down, but we have to answer anything you want to ask. But until next week, I will come out with the subject next week. Um, uh, I look forward to seeing you then. Have, enjoy the rest of your day. Hope you enjoyed this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Take care. And I hope some got off to uni. Okay, uh, uh, Jenny. Okay. Take care.